one, Alex, who runs the Sweden Society Music, which is like a Scottish music site, I guess. They do a lot of prompt interviews, put on shows, podcasts, and I would do that. I was saying the before we started, I do like single reviews and written article interviews and features and all that jazz. Kind of cover the whole kind of spectrum. Yeah, um, plug it, plug it, everything, all the social medias, everything, get it on. Oh, yeah, uh, so oh, this is going to be the test so I can remember it all. <laughs> Spinning Society Music, Instagram, Spinning Society Music, but with a one instead of an I, and Edgy. Twitter is Spinning Society, um, that's because I couldn't get the number one, so I don't know. <laughs> so you had to make the, um, yeah, so check those out, give them love, like, share, subscribe, follow, all the good stuff, um, and yeah, so let's jump right in. Where are you in life right now? What are you doing? What's happening? I'm back in Aberdeen at the minute, man. I'm up in the, the northeast of Scotland. And you loving it, hating it, surviving? But I'm saying to you, though, like, it could be worse. I mean, I'm yeah. safe, I'm doing fine. I'm kind of still functioning as a human. I've still got a bit of a, a schedule about my day at the moment, so I'm not really too too affected by it. Not um, phased. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, but there's not really anything you can do, so there's no point in getting like all worked up about it. Yeah, it? yeah, that's true. Um, so, I mean, I kind of want to make the main body of this about vintage society music and I want to like dive in deep and talk with you about that and the interviews you've done but before we jump into that I want to talk a bit about uh, film because yeah. I know you were a, I don't know if you currently do that or you still kind of do that as much but you made some banging short films and stuff like that yeah I've got another one coming out actually really? I think pretty plug soon. that as um, well <laughs> I shot it well I shot it um, last February February 2019 and it's been one of those things, man, because I've been so busy with everything else, it's just kind of, I've always had work to do with other stuff, so it just kind of put on the back burner. Mm. Um, that was one of the things I did, that was productive on Sunday, I dug it out. Uh, I basically spent most of the day doing it, because I regraded the whole thing, in my colour green. Right. Uh, went through and regraded the whole thing, did all the colouring again, and changed the edit slightly. And then we're getting the score put on it this week, so it should be out, like, uh, pronto. Uh, but I study films, so I guess I do still do a decent bit of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, how many shorts have you made? Um, that's a good question. I don't know, man. It's probably like ten or something, maybe something about that. A dozen, maybe. And what's the sort of creative process behind them? Do you just like set and write, or is there someone else that you usually take inspiration from, or what's going on there? Uh, well, I've not done them for a while. I mean, what I used to do was I just used to write this, sit and work quite a lot of the script. I mean, the same with what I do writing now when I'm writing reviews. I'm, my kind of process is that I redraft everything constantly. Mm. So, like, I mean, it would probably the same for scripts, but like, when I'm writing a review now, or whatever, maybe like 5% of what was originally put down on the page will be like in the final thing. Like, it's just constant redrafting. Right. Uh, when I get into films, I would sit and write a script, and then once I kind of had that in a position where I was happy with it, I would send it to folks that I've, you know, I've worked with before, cameramen. Uh, in cinematographers and stuff that all write in their own right and get their thoughts on it and then continue developing it and then once the script's at a point where we're happy with it that's when you kind of start getting actors involved camera people involved properly uh, my producer I know I used to kind of try and do as much of it myself as I could yeah, yeah, of course. I'm quite controlling when it comes to everything what uh, um, what do you take sort of like inspiration from what what like they've been quite diverse um, so what is it like do you know what I mean what's going on there where do you find stuff and what, where do you pull stuff from well I mean everything I mean I used to I probably used to be better at it because I used to like the way my kind of oh, it's going to sound really pretentious the way, so the way my mind works is that I'm kind of constantly I'll always be obsessed with something so I used to probably be obsessed with film and I was playing music a bit more but when I was obsessed with film I would just constantly be thinking of ideas and stuff mm. I wanted to do and shots and everything like that and just constantly um, thinking of ways I could shoot things or projects I could do so I mean like the one we did one about a cowboy and the inspiration for that was I literally just saw uh, a poster like on my wall I used to the poster the good the bad and the ugly up and then kind of started thinking well, what was a cowboy if you come to the city and all that mm. and then it kind of grounds and legs and turned out this whole like, metaphor for immigration and the way people that uh, the way people treat other people that are different to them and stuff mm. uh, then it would be my first film and then I'd I one about fucking Satsu and shit like that as well. Just random places I used to draw inspiration from, just nonsense. But yeah, but I mean, I, it's, solid. it's a good point yeah. to start from. Like, if you've got a good visual element, and you can kind of work outward from there and work in the meaning behind it and 
can I use it on the vessel for topics you want to discuss or explore or mm. say something like that. Do you think your mind is like more in music now, yeah, as you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I can, I'm, always, like I always say, I'm always obsessed with something and it used to be film. And I still love going to the cinema, I still love watching films. Mm. Uh, I still listen to film podcasts and do a lot of reading them, but it's definitely more as uh, I can sue on that as opposed to a creator, probably. I would still like to um, probably go back and write scripts, but I hate like the actual the filmmaking process, like shooting really? films. Oh, it's horrible, man. It's just messy, and it's like you just want to get your idea. I like editing. Editing was done, and you're getting it to the final, down the home straight, and writing and scripting, you can do whatever you want. But it's just, see, when you're making films, it's like everything you've envisioned is just like, crumbles and it's just yeah. like Chris <laughs> and where you're like rushing about trying to get all the shots you need and all is that. Is that not part of the excitement? Yeah, but it's also quite painful. <laughs> like, worked on the idea for like months or even like I think one of them was like two years I'd like had the idea before I made it. And it was just like it's just painful. It hurts. Um so vintage society music. You've got video series, you've got written articles, you've got podcasts, what else is going on? Or is that sort of the three main elements? Yeah, I mean, we do shows as well. That's probably the last one. That's probably your kind of bulk of stuff. Promotions. There you go. So you've got in person, you've got audio only, you've got written only, and you've got for your eyes. You've covered the main bases. I like, yeah, I like to cover all the bases. I like to cover yeah. all the cards. One for all the senses. You need one just based on smell now, and that's what you've covered everything. What could that be? What could you use based on smell for you should You should make like a, a perfume based on certain bands. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite I do, that's quite fun, that. yeah. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> genius. <laughs> I'll look. Um, so, what was the inspiration behind the Vintage Sign and Vintage Sign music? Um, well, I obviously used to work with yourself at Pure Culture. Uh, Shout out to Pure Culture. <laughs> <laughs> it came off the back of that, really, because I used to enjoy like, doing the blog and stuff there. Uh, and I was at the time, I still went to my films and studying, I thought. It didn't really seem to be. I mean, um, as far as I'm aware, there doesn't really seem to be anyone else at the minute combining film and mm. uh, like kind of music. Obviously, time and you do the the sessions and all that, and you do get like net and stuff that are really good. But in terms of like the Scottish scene, there's not really anyone else doing film that views. I've seen like a few pop up, but in terms of like pumping them out consistently and like doing fun, there's not really any other blogs I'm aware of kicking about. You maybe I don't know. Is there? Not really, no. Not that it's like sort of like taking a deep dive like you have. Um, who are some of the most interesting people that you've spoken to? Like you personally have found them the most interesting? Jack Garrett was a really good one. Really? Yeah. Back in February. He makes he was really pretty banging guy. music, so I'm not surprised he's cool. Yeah, I knew EP is quite amazing. It depends. I think as long as you like the person's music, you can. It tends to be like the artist that I'm more into, or obviously I prefer speaking to, because I think there's more I can kind of dive into and I'm naturally interested in. Mm-hmm. Uh, HMLDT, who did them earlier this year, they were really good. Who's that? Uh, I think it's Happy Me Limited, it stands for. HMLTD. Right. One band, Root Pretty, a decent size, to be honest. I was at that I never should have sold that, I think, like 200 cap. Right. Uh, they're all right. They're like a good size, but a really good album this year. They were really fascinating to speak to because they're kind of quite an, they kind of combine like a strong visual aesthetic with like art and music. Without so going, oh sorry, go for it. Sorry, what were you saying? Without going for like the, the heavy name drop, who is like the most famous person you've spoken to? Uh, I mean, worldwide sticky fingers probably. Like they play like stadiums in Australia and stuff. They're pretty. And I don't know, DMAs are probably. Mm. You know, they're probably quite big over here, aren't they? So you've got some goodies in there. Um, what do you what do you enjoy doing most? Like, what medium is it that you're? Is it shooting the interviews? Is it doing like the podcast style, or is it just written interviews? Uh, I mean, the best type of interviews doing an interview face to face when there's not a camera. On. That's when you'll get the best like actual interview out of someone. Because mm. uh, if you just put like, I mean, I've got one here actually. It's just sitting at a shot. If you just put a little task cam down on the table and then start speaking to someone, they forget it's there. Right. You just, you're having a conversation with them, that's when you get the best results, and it's the most enjoyable for both parties. So it kind of becomes uh, transparent, like people just ramble on, like they don't, they're not paying attention to the cameras or like. They're yeah, they can, there's always kind of like a wall or a barrier. I mean, I always say like, get the best stuff when you're doing an interview 
when you're like packing up and sitting, like taking it down. Mm-hmm. Always after they actually when you finish it, or you just chat to them about other stuff. That's always when you get the best stuff and the cameras turned off. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. What's some juicy gossip? <laughs> oh, I can't even say. Come on, tell us something. In regards to like who became an artist, anything. I, I don't care. Anything. I'm putting you on the spot. I just want to hear any information. I don't think there is. It's just there's always stuff like you hear someone's a big or something. Or, <laughs> like, other than that, that's all. So yeah. nothing, nothing specific. I couldn't possibly divulge. Sure, I might have come out of power thing a bit. <laughs> you could say allegedly, and then no one will know. That's how that works, I right? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, I, don't, I don't want to just name on a podcast saying, oh, I've heard someone's a prick, because I've never met them, so I wouldn't know, like, it could be lovely for all I know. Maybe it's fair just, enough, fair enough. If people get to, like, a... Um, you totally caught out there, what was that? I was saying, like, although some people might say they're a prick, like, if you get to... any Anytime you're successful, you're also going to have to step on someone's toes if someone's not going to like you. Like, mm. Yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. So, Okay, we won't we won't gossip, <laughs> ruining the fun. But no biggie, I'm not bothered. Um, no, but uh, who are some people you'd really like to speak to? Like, if there was no restriction, nothing, you could just go for anyone. Who would you go? For? Who would you go for? Living uh, or dead? Who? Living or dead? Why? Hmm? Why? Why? Why not just someone alive? Like, why do you, why do we need to like have I'm, someone? I'm, dead? I'm, I mean, Bob Dylan, the obvious one. You'd want to speak to him, probably. He'd be an interesting guy. Um, are we talking like realistic or like just in like? I mean, you're you're going for dead people. Like, I always wonder like why that's something. Dead. No, no, no. You you were asking like dead or alive, right? I I always think like, are we out of luck? Like, do we have so little cool people alive now that people are like, oh, can I pick someone that's dead? <laughs> I always find that funny. I Kirk the would be the one person I would want to really, yeah. have a chat with. Really interesting. Um, which is why I, uh, other than him there's probably not too many I mean actually there's probably quite a lot of different let's speak to but just as many you know that are alive today mm. like if you think to like oh, is there anyone be a big fan of in regards to a band like whether it's I'm trying to think of, like Alright Monkeys or Interpol or any you know the Strokes anyone who's had got quite a colourful head I think you're kind of interested to dive into and see what's going on yeah especially the, the artists what the thought process is in regards to songwriting their opinions on you know various things and stuff who would you go for that's dead then? You've made me intrigued. Okay. And who else? Well, yeah. Give me a list. Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison, well, probably. Mm. Maybe that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's like John Lennon. John Lennon. Oh, uh, oh, there must be some more interesting people. Like. Put them on the spot. No, I'm just, because well, as soon as you say all the big ones just start coming, but there must be smaller bands, I think. Hmm. Um, change of subject. Do you want to talk about about um, putting on gigs and promoting bands? I can. What would you like to know? I want to know everything. Tell me your process of going into it. How do you find it? Um, would you ever recommend someone to do this? Do you think this is something that people should dive into? Is it too hard? Is it worth it? What do you think? Um, um, putting on gigs is probably the most. But putting on gigs is interesting because it makes the player look differently. It, it, it definitely kind of changed the experience I had like before and after like in the music industry uh, once I started putting on gigs. Because mm. when you're like, running a blog web and you're doing a PR site, uh, especially to be enough that no one else is really doing, everyone wants to, everyone just like, oh, wants, to do, wants to do stuff. But then like, there's so many like, bigger promoters putting on shows, so as soon as that, uh, you start doing that, you kind of see the other side of some people, if you know what I mean? Mm. Which I find quite... But that's like that's the music industry is a nice deal when they want something from you and then as soon as they don't think you that's gonna be a good platform for them they just don't they do it here. um i mean it is good what did you say like go through the process of it how it's, it's, yeah so what is the sort of uh, process behind it how do you find who you want to promote and how does that go then i mean i i, I put a book in the venue like pick a day book a venue you book the venue so that's on, yeah i was booked I think so. I've heard of people doing it both ways. I've been you freshly, it's in place and it's locked in. Right. There's probably plenty of artists you can choose from. Like, there's so many artists that can come back to Scotland at the minute. Um, I think that the venue, I'll then go in. 
start looking at an artist? I mean, it's hard to think of it because I'm kind of just starting. I mean, the plan was, I do quite like working with the same artists like a few times. I would say I did read a pleasure than I would in last, last June, and then we were obviously supposed to do two days in March, and we had some other things that were getting discussed about, but doing more days with them. Right. I think we're just going to have to do the other ones first. But I, I find one that you enjoy working with, and they enjoy working with you, I think you do a decent job of it, and are able to kind of promote those shows well, then it is enjoyable to work with them, I can. Is the, uh, is the enjoyment of doing the show does it weigh out how stressful it is to actually put on the show? Probably not, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's really stressful. Like, I get proper stressed out, especially the, it's the... I mean, I do love putting them on, uh, but compared to a lot of this stuff, it's so stressful. Because as soon as you start taking... Again, like, as soon as you start taking money into an equation, people start to change, and mm. people want shows to be good. If a band is a shit interview, you don't care, but if a band is a shit show, it's so much bigger. Mm. Um, so it's definitely more pressure on you. I mean, luckily, just thinking about the other shows we've done so far, we've not had a bad show yet. So, which probably means there's one coming, which will be an yeah. interesting experience. That I've done. <laughs> I suppose a bad show you can just learn from, though, right? Yeah, man, same with anything. Like, ugh, I've made so many mistakes like along the road, and as long as you learn from them, there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. It's part of life. It's part of yeah. progressing. You have to make mistakes to get better at stuff. Exactly. As long as you can uh, take something from it, it's not really a mistake, is it? Yeah, exactly. If you can work out what went wrong and how to avoid that happening again, then it's just a learning experience. Like everything, it's good. Exactly. Um, do you have any uh, podcasts, interviews, and gigs lined up? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think how much this I can say. Oh. So we've got the. <laughs> I'm looking got, for like the, re- the rescheduled pleasure had dates. I think we're getting announced. This podcast. When's the podcast going? When's this podcast going up? Yeah, know what to say and what not to devil. Um, it'll probably go up. Uh, what day is it today? Wednesday. Wednesday. So not the Friday coming. Not the even Friday the after. not not even the Friday after the Friday after that. So free Friday. Right, so we've got two shows. We've got coming our rescheduled. Um. So that's 17th of Snake Ease and 18th of Aberdeen. They were rescheduled for March because obviously they got cancelled. When are they um, rescheduled for, sorry? 17th and 18th of September. So September. So do you think uh, like gigs and, and stuff like that, events like that, of that level, will be back to normal by September? I have no idea, man. I mean, you, you just, just have to book them in. You have to book them in case. Hmm. Like, you don't want to... I, know if, I mean, I know a few folks are just not rebooking anything, but I'm like... I just think it's a bit daft, man. You'd be as well just put the stuff back in because it takes such little work to book a show back in. Like, it's still a hassle, but even if it gets cancelled in the end, it's worth booking it in in case. Mm, yeah. So I would hope getting them to September. I think smaller ones will be. I don't think we'll see over 500 cap shows for the rest of the year. Um, but I think they'll bring back the under 500 cap ones first. I'm hoping. Ugh, it's hard to say, man. They might bring them. I don't think they'll bring them back in London, maybe, but outside of there. End of the summer, maybe hopefully we can start to see them coming, but no one knows. I, I don't know. I hope I, I don't have any estimation of one. Yeah, have you had any like uh, gigs that you were going to attend being cancelled? Oh, tons, man. Tons, yeah. Same. I've lost that so many interviews and podcasts from all this, but you just got to keep going. There's nothing you can do. And the same with, I mean, we had so we only had those we had three shows announced that got like officially like postponed, but I think we must have had a bit of. Like eight shows moved or something, ten shows maybe moved. Really? And just like other plans that we've had to cancel because we've never had to reschedule shows and mm. chaos at the minute. But it's the same for everyone, everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, of course. Can't help but be bummed out though. Yeah, I mean, I'd is. rather that they weren't cancelled if it's both. But yeah. Um, so if you could put on a gig, right, what would your dream venue be? And who would your dream lineup be with your headline and support? Two bands. Maybe two sports. Two sports. Um, I'm trying. I'm, I, think I'll go, I think what I'm going to do is I'd put on three bands I really like that would fit together. Say my favourite bands would like, kind of work well as a show. Um, what would the venue be? 
probably Battle Lines. Probably really? Battle yeah. Lines. Battle Lines. Um, it would probably be. Oh, who am I going to put on head? Like, I know what the three bands, but I don't know who I'm going to put on head. Probably put Art of Monkey's headline, Strokes Main Support, in the polo. That is. <laughs> At the Barrel Lines, I imagine that. No one would die. That'd be fun. <laughs> Right, I, I honestly think that you should achieve this now at some point in your life. If you, if like, uh, this is it, you're, you're setting this in stone, you're, this is a declaration. I've always said that I'll stop interviewing bands when I interview Paul Banks from Interpol, so we'll need to wait and see. <laughs> the day is not yet, but we'll never know. Um, so what else is going on in your life? What's, what's happening in the future? I know it's, like, really unpredictable right now because of, like, the current situation of things, but... Where do you see Vintage Society going in the future? I mean, like, I'm trying to think, of, I don't want to sound insensitive, but like, I mean, we've definitely taken some positives from the whole um, kind of epidemic that's going on at the minute. Like, the website wasn't supposed to start until May, and the whole thing happened, I basically just knuckled down and got it out and up within a few days of me starting working on it, which is the end of March. And since we started the website, like, for whatever reason, like, it's kind of just been growing my views have been increasing week on week every week and the instagram will like double the followers or whatever i don't know if that even means anything but the instagram followers have doubled for whatever reason as a result of doing that so i mean I've, i'm gonna wrap up my uni work at the end of next week that should have been wrapped up and after that i'm probably just gonna knuckle down at the minute i'm writing like two or three articles a day for the website uh, which is taking up all my time but i'll, okay. you know, I'll, do, so I'll probably just stop not doing it anymore as much as i can as well as putting in a bit of a, a bit more of a structure and an infrastructure in place for when things go back to normal so I can kind of handle better because I'm not always the best at being uh, time efficient probably would be the word in regards oh. to the website <laughs> not always the best at time efficiency I feel like that's everyone ever we're all struggling yeah. with that one but yeah so you're just uh, keeping what you're doing consistent and just building it up building it up yeah I mean, you just keep it going and see. You just got to keep pushing it, man. You can't really stop. Yeah. I mean, it's going out of the minute. Um, I definitely think there's a gap in the market, like the kind of Scottish music blog at the minute. So it's just about trying to keep putting out. It's not about putting out content. And that's the thing a lot of people think they just try and put out tons of content, but mm-hmm. it has to be good stuff that people actually want to read or else. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's the point? Yeah. Um, I suppose this is kind of like the best time to do it. There's a lot of like, time people got a lot of time to like take the time to read it or listen to a podcast or watch a video kind of thing yeah i mean it'll be interesting to see when everything goes back to normal what happens at the viewership mm. on the website if that stays yeah yeah same rate or if it drops off yeah i mean hopefully not hopefully everything just keeps going but yeah best that think is unpredictable it is definitely i mean i certainly wanted the time to be writing like three hours of a day yeah that's so true, that's true. So it probably will drop off a wee bit as long as I keep pushing overall. Yeah. Well, I hope everything goes well. Is there anything you want to bring up? Anything you want to plug in? I'm trying to think. I'm dr- I should have come up with some things that for some questions for you. I don't know. What have you been up to? What's been, has your lot to me? Just... <laughs> like it's been a very one sided conversation. Uh, I know. I, I suppose it does. Like, it can feel like that. I, I'm just, like, constantly asking questions. I think I'm just, like, naturally into that, though. Like, even yeah. off camera or off, like, podcast, I'm just, like. Is that why you, you started it? Um, I don't know. I feel like I probably just started it because, well, maybe actually, yeah, I'm just generally fascinated about what people have got to say, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah you're, I mean, yeah, probably, I, I think, yeah. I mean, the good thing about your podcast is, like, I normally kind of stick to class. I either normally do bands and occasionally I get something for a con, but you kind of get everyone, so you must learn, like, quite a, a yeah. wide spectrum of stuff from it. You must pick up a lot from it. People. That's honestly that you're spot on. Like all I care about is just learning everything about everything. Like, nothing's off limits for me. I'll talk about anything with anybody. I just want to hear other people's points of views. I want to share my point of view. I want to just like bat it about and like constantly learn and sort of uh, like evolve my perception of things. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't want to like at all restrict who I speak to. Like I'll speak to anybody if anybody wants to talk. Yeah. That's well, a shout out to anyone that wants to talk. <laughs> I'm interested in um, like what's like your interview process before like doing questions because I've never actually spoken to anyone else who does interviews about how they kind of prepare for it and what their process is. Oh, I don't have a process. 
like I, I have a, like a notebook in front of me there's nothing in it like I, the only thing I took note of is when we started the podcast so that I know uh, like when to like cut to so like the recording time to like when we actually started podcasting just so I can find that part easy that's literally all I have in this book when uh, see I, I, someone asked like why I uh, why I do this one's like someone that was on it and I was like Basically, if I messaged you and said, hey, can you come like to my house and just speak to me for an hour? That'd be really strange. But if I said, hey, do you want to come to my podcast and speak to me for an hour? They're like, yeah, that's cool. That's totally normal. So like, that's kind of like the, the process. I feel like I'm getting something out of it and learning about things without being a pure creep and being like, hey, <laughs> you want to come to my house and talk to me? <laughs> it's um, like we, did a, we did a thing with the whole isolation stuff is going on a minute called isolation recommendation mm. um, we basically just got artists to recommend like uh, album artists tv film like some culture and stuff and i literally came out of me sticking up with like an instagram story asking for reading recommendations and i was like why don't i just ask bands and like frame it as an article honestly mm. i got so many reading recommendations after doing that man it was a perfect crime that's good that's good i like the way you think that's good um in, in regards to my uh how I, like, my interview process is really just, I just talk to people. I don't, I don't like going in with, like, a preconceived idea because I feel like that would already guide where I want to go. Like, I like going in completely blind and just be like, I might ask stupid questions or I might ask, like, rude questions. I don't know, but I'm here to learn, do you know what I mean? So you just start the combo and then kind of freewheel it and yeah. just it takes it. Yeah. Like, I would never just walk up to someone with pre, pre-written pre questions. Yeah. So I feel like I shouldn't do it in this medium because I want it to be as raw and transparent as possible. Yeah. How um, does that, um, do you ever, like, get, is it, has there ever been a time that when you've kind of just not had a question or do you find you always have something? Um, man, you're, you're killing it here, Paul. <laughs> Thing. I've turned the tables. <laughs> this is this is what I'm not ready for when people ask me questions like, "What do I say? What do I say?" <laughs> um, I feel like there's never been like, I'm not really bothered about like that lo- awkward like lull, because uh, I feel like I kind of do that naturally anyway. Like I'll take a moment and think because I want to process the information properly. I don't just like jumping on and keep going and keep going if I'm like stuttering or, or like tripping over myself because I'd rather take the time to like think about it. I feel like there's been a couple where I'm like literally gobsmacked I'm like what like that happens or... you, don't know, you don't know what to say yeah yeah like it's not that I'm, I have no question to ask it's literally because I'm 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 not no information to add to this situation it's just so overwhelming also I think if like someone reveals something quite personal or like heartfelt or they've been honest with you it almost feels a bit insensitive to like follow up with like another question yeah exactly yeah you totally need to read the room sometimes I, I mean like I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm very good at that, to be honest, like... It's tough when you're in that scenario, though, when the cameras are rolling. Yeah, and you're like, oh, lol. <laughs> you're breaking a sweat, pretending like you didn't just hear that, and you're like... Like, sometimes you either hear it, and you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Or sometimes you hear it, and you're like, oh my god, I'm about to cry. <laughs> I was totally not expecting that. But yeah, sometimes when people reveal, like, I don't know, you don't, it's so hard, like, how do you even handle it? I mean, like you say, you've got to read the room. You kind of just yeah. got to room for it. Have you had one of those situations where, you're like, oh, what did I say now? Like, they just just ask another question and move on, or what? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I normally just try and t- I take a pause and kind of stick in. I'd just say what I would naturally say. Like, I would probably say like something just what feels natural and just try mm-hmm. and take another question. Um, but it can be awkward because it's especially with the filmed ones. I mean, it's easier to do it when you're not over the phone or in person and you don't have the camera gone, but with the film ones, because the format is so question, answer, question, answer. Yeah. And you can make it conversational, but it's still kind of locked into that structure. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a bad podcast yet? Bad podcast? That's one. No, like... <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had a bad the podcast. See, I, I'm, again, like, I would say I'm pretty transparent, so... When you ask me this question, I'm like, oh, I'm ready to say it. I'm ready, like, pure, is there someone one? down. But nah, I don't, I don't think I have. I feel like I get information. I get something out of all of them. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm constantly learning, even if it's, like, I don't know. I guess I don't really have a standard of, like, where I want it to be anyway. Yeah, I mean, um, like, 
as long as you kind of get something from the conversation, like you say, it's yeah. kind of successful. Um, I don't, nah, I don't think I have a bad one. I've actually had like maybe two or three that I haven't uploaded though because like uh, there've been like technical difficulties or it's like I have a really weird thing where I don't want any edits in it. Like I just want it to be like from start to end and that's it. Like, so if anything goes wrong, and then it's like, I've had one where someone like, was like, can you cut that out? And I was like, no, I can't. I'll, I'll take the episode completely down or like, and they're like, uh, I was like, I'm happy, like, just take it down if that's what you want, but I'm not editing it. And they were like, uh, do you know what, it's fine, just leave it. <laughs> so I was, I was lucky in that one, but yeah. I really want it to just be like, not well, strict, it, but just like. A believable conversation. It's like a natural yeah. thing. I mean, if you put edit points in it, it definitely kind of takes yeah. something out of it. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with like editing it, it's just, um, I think they sort of just suit their own thing, like with with my podcast like this, I, I want it just to be sort of raw, transparent, I don't really care how, how good it looks, as long as like, the conversation is happening, like, do you know what I mean, I'm willing to sacrifice quality, but then some things I'm like, I'd actually rather make this like, technically worse, as long as it looks good, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you've got to stick by your guns and kind of set them what you want it to be and then yeah. just kind of stick to that for every episode. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, to some degree, I don't want this to be too polished because as soon as it's too polished, like, I need to maintain that standard. But because yeah, it's kind of, like, rough and around the edges and just kind of, like, as it is. More handcrafted as well, like, more kind of DIY. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, thank you for coming on. If you have any more questions... Rapid fire, I'll, I'll take them on if you have any. I don't know. Oh, do you listen to any podcast? That's one thing I'm always looking out for. Do I listen to any podcast? Podcast recommendations, yeah. Um, well, I can't recommend yours because you make yours, but I would recommend yours. I've listened to all your episodes. Pretty solid, great question asking. Like, you're a great interviewer. Um, I listen... I listened to one, I don't know the name of it, but I don't recommend it either. It's like a, it's literally like learning Spanish. That one sucks, but I'm still learning. I'm still listening to it because I want to learn. Um, I'm going to bring my phone up, see if I can find it. I've, li- I've definitely dabbled in uh, Joe Rogan because he's the OG, I suppose. Some interesting stuff in him. He's got some good ones. Yeah. I like how, how he does it. Like He has like, oh, I find this person inter- interesting come on do you know what I mean I like that so transparent of what he's all about I quite like H3 podcast um, H3 H3 yeah do you know them no I don't um, so it's uh, H3 H3 productions like it's like a guy who had a YouTube channel and him and his wife now uh, have a podcast yeah, it's, it's pretty good um, do I listen to any more it's I don't know. I feel like that's probably it. I definitely want to check out Louis Theroux's new podcast. I just saw that he has one. Oh, I listened to that. It was good. Really? Yeah. Worth the worth. Yeah, I like. Yeah, John Ronson. I quite like as well. He's got some good podcasts too. He Who's that? Like John Ronson. He's like a journalist. Um, he wrote. He read that book. He's got like so. You've been publicly shamed. Psychopath test. Right. 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 I can see them from here actually, I've got, I've got them set on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving the major shout out, you've even got the product. Love it. I know, it's getting free. <laughs> this is actually sponsored by <laughs> John Ronson's book. But yeah. no, that is good. I listened to it yesterday morning. Yeah, yesterday morning. If, uh, if anyone watching has any good podcasts, hit us up. Tell us what you listen to. I'm definitely interested. Comment below. No one comments below. No one does that. I don't know about you, well. I don't know about you, but like obviously I don't know. Wait, do you upload your podcast to YouTube or is it just on like yeah? Where where is uh, it? Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, two three. Um, well, maybe you can like answer this question in regards to like your podcast and your video content. But do you get more view, uh, more lessons than you do views? Or more views than you do listens generally. I know it's what, not the exact same in, in terms of podcast versus uh, YouTube videos. Yeah, both interviews. Like, what one gets the most uh, attention? Oh, YouTube definitely. Really? Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It's because YouTube's a platform that people are constantly searching. It's like if someone sticks in, like 
the way I used to do it as well, I kind of looked into how the algorithms worked and how you could get your videos up higher. Um, so it's to do with like scheduling and having stuff come out at the same time every week and all that jazz. Right. Uh, and have a bit of certain. I know, I know, that was kind of as far as I went with it, to be honest. But like when you used to stick in like, you know, DMAs or whatever, I ended up using like the third video that would come up. So like, I used to get like tons of like views from it from doing all that. So like YouTube definitely I've got way more views on. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm interested to see what like everyone's kind of average is for people who like upload just the audio and then upload the video as well. Yeah, I mean the thing about YouTube is they keep ticking up over time. Like people keep watching them. Whereas I find podcasts, you get a big burst at the start, and then occasionally you'll get someone else. But it's kind of mm. doesn't come as quick. Um, well, it's been great talking to you. I really appreciate yeah, it. Oh, I appreciate um, it. Good fun. Check out all of the, the uh, Vintage Society stuff. Def- definitely recommend that. Uh, podcast, video content, written stuff. Got everyone. Go to the gigs. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it.